Well, that's neat. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the EasyViz C6 2K Plus camera. This is a pan tilt zoom camera that also has integrated micro SD card for keeping your clips or continuous storage on the device itself. It has motion tracking for pet person, also has noise, voice, and gesture capability using integrated AI, has 2K video clip storage, and operates on Wi-Fi 2.4 or 5 gigahertz spectrum. If that sounds good to you, then you're in the right place. EasyViz did provide me the C6 for the purposes of doing an unbiased review, which is what you're going to get. If any of those things that I said to you at the beginning of the video sound interesting, you're in the right place. Now with any smart home device, including a camera, there is a setup process, and that setup process determines whether you actually utilize the new camera that you got, or you just get rid of it for something else. So let's take a look at the actual setup process for the C6. This is the setup of the EasyViz C6 2K camera. First, you're gonna start by downloading the application, creating an account. If you've already done that, simply open the application, come to the upper right-hand corner of your screen, select the plus sign, and you're going to then select add a device. Gives you a plethora of choices, but it's really simple. We're gonna come up to camera, because that's what we're trying to add. If you're using an Android phone, it's gonna ask you some permissions, because there is a QR screen QR code on the bottom of the camera that we're gonna scan, just like that. Gives you the serial number, uh, and it says we should power on the device. So that is what we're going to do very quickly. We're going to power on the device and plugging it into the back of the device, which will move since it can rotate. So we're gonna plug that in there. And there is a light at the top right there. It's kind of red. So we're gonna say device is powered on and we're gonna hit next. And then we've got two different ways that we can attach this to our network. We've got Wi-Fi or we've got a ethernet port on the back. We're gonna do Wi-Fi for now. So I'm gonna hit next. We do have to allow location permissions. I'm gonna select only this time. All right, so we're watching that rotate down and then it's gonna start flashing blue once ready, according to the application. So it looks like it's gonna do a 360, kind of get all the motors, making sure that they're working correctly. Please use EasyViz app for device Wi-Fi configuration. And just like that, it's flashing blue and gave us a little message. So we're gonna say yes and hit next. And it wants us to pick our Wi-Fi network. And here we go, it's going to temporarily connect to my Wi-Fi network. Kind of has some serial numbers on there, so I'm keeping the app over to the side. Might be a little hard to see, but that is blinking blue down there. And now it's asking us where we would like to place our device. So in my case, I'm going to say this is gonna be in the living room and I'm gonna hit next. Connecting to Wi-Fi, please wait. And I'm- Wi-Fi connected. And I'm sure you heard that. It said connecting to Wi-Fi, please wait. Uh, and it said connected to Wi-Fi and now it is- Platform registration successful. Configuration complete. Welcome to EasyBiz. And there you go. That has my device added. And you can see kind of my hand there. That was the setup of the EasyViz C6. As you saw, setup, not terrible. Now let's take a look at the overall construction and look of this unique camera. And I say unique because, well, to me, this kind of looks like an air freshener. And when the camera lens is flipped back up for privacy, mind you, you get a little face indicator right here. This is painted on. Now, I will say I do like the fact that that's there. One, because the camera rolls itself back up, keeping it out of sight, letting you know you are absolutely private. But also having a little facial thing here lets you know, hey, the camera is up. Because sometimes if it's a dark room, you might not notice when the camera lenses roll back up. With this, you have a face, you will always know. The size of the C6, that kind of, again, looks like a little air freshener of some sort, is about the size of a US softball. So if you're familiar with that, that kind of gives you an idea of the size of this. So it's not the smallest pan tilt zoom camera that I've ever tested. However, it's also not the largest. And it doesn't stand out saying, hey, I'm a camera, because, well, the unique shape of it. If we move our camera lens down, First, you're gonna see right here, this is actually the location of where the micro SD card is, which the C6 can have up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Part of that is due to the fact that it does have that 2K resolution for video clips, so you're gonna need that larger card, but this camera has one of the largest stated capable SD cards. Aside from that, you've got your reset button right there, and that's all hidden behind a little flap. 
And as we continue to roll our camera lens down, we start to see the actual camera. Camera lens itself has a 79 degree horizontal field of view and a 42 degree vertical view. But remember, this is a pan tilt, so we have plenty of movement that allow us to see even more. Now, one of the surprising things that I found with this particular camera is at the top right here, there are two IR lights which can project out to 33 feet. They are the only two IR lights on this camera. I was actually surprised at how good the video quality was at night for just having two IR lights. The only problem that I have with the IR lights is while they do swap over to night mode on their own automatically, there is no way to currently turn them off and on manually, which I do kind of like with cameras like this. Coming down to the sides of our camera lens right here, this is actually going to be our microphone because we can do two-way talk with this, which is great. And then right here, again, might be a little hard to see uh, with my lighting, but that is the LED status light. Again, you can turn off the LED status light. I like that. The one thing that I don't understand is it's not a steady LED light. It's going to blink all the time, whether it's recording, whether it's not recording, whether it's rolled up and hidden away, you'll still see it blinking up there. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why they chose to have it do that. Just know it's gonna blink on you unless you turn it off. I did mention the 256 gigabyte card that you can have for this, but you also have the ability to have cloud storage for a fee, but the fact that they let you keep this on device always helpful. Coming around to the rest of the device, well down here, this is actually our rotation pad. The top is the portion that spins. If we swing around the back, this is going to be our speaker right there. And then another unique feature of the C6, as we come down here, we have our micro, sadly not USB-C, but micro USB port, but also have the ability to plug this into an ethernet connection as well. So not only do you get five gigahertz for a security camera, which a lot of the other competitors don't do because they figure you want further distance, not faster speeds. Well, now you have faster speeds over Wi-Fi, but also faster speeds if you plug it directly into ethernet. So I like the fact that that's there. It's a really cool addition for something like this. On the bottom, you can see right here, we have three little rubber feet to help keep it in place. And then a channel right here. Well, that channel is for some mounting piece of hardware that we get in the box with the C6. So let's actually take a look at the other things that we get in the box with the C6. First thing is the mounting plate for the C6, which is what I was talking about before. It simply comes into place right here and then twists and then you have your holes for the included mounting hardware. So you've got three screws and three wall anchors. You also have a guide for the plate so that you know exactly where to put things. And then last but not least is actually the power cable, which comes with a detachable wall wart. So if you needed a longer cable, you could detach this and get one. However, I am going to state that the cable that comes with the C6 is one of the most generous power cables that I have ever gotten with a camera before. This cable is three inches shy of being 10 feet long. So I really think you are not going to hurt for cableage with this device. But if you do, just know because it has a wall work, you can take that off and get a longer bit of cable. We had briefly touched upon the fact that this has person pet motion, noise, voice, and wave controls. All of those things are actually set up and done through the EasyViz app. This is the app for the EasyViz C6 2K Plus Pan Tilt Camera. Here we can see this is actually the homepage when you first log into your application. Right here you could see the singular camera from EasyViz that I currently have. Upper right hand corner plus sign allows you to add more cameras if you want. Right here we've got our layout style. So right now I have it on expanded. You can have it on condensed or list view and then sort by space device type and then we can rearrange our spacing. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the app to personalize it. Over here, we have a picture of a person with a red dot. Selecting this brings you into your profile. We'll discuss that a little later. Further down on our page, we have our arm disarm. So if you have several EasyViz cameras, you can arm and disarm them all at once simply by sliding that over to the side to arm everything. But let's get to the actual EasyViz C6 that I have set up right here. You can see in the upper right hand corner of my little preview window, I have a seven. That lets you know that there are seven entries uh, that it has captured. Now, when I get to it, I'm gonna show you how to turn this on because if you don't have push notifications sent to your phone, you won't actually get the library or this number up here. This 
is a arrow, which if we select that, brings us right into the settings for the Easy Viz, as opposed to if we just tap on the Easy Viz, it brings us into the camera portion first. And we'll just watch that load up. And depending on your network connectivity is how quickly that loads up. So on our main page here, you could see it's letting me know there was a seven day free trial for the cloud storage, letting me know that kind of expired. I wish there was a way to kind of make that go away or make the default the actual internal SD card that I have on this. And here it will show you all the clips that I have. And it does take a little bit of time for those to load up, but you'll notice in the lower right hand corner of some of our videos with the AI, it says, well, a pet and person was detected, a pet and person was detected, and in this one, a pet was detected. You can arrange how you like. So nearby devices, it's showing me there's one, and then I could play that directly from there. We're gonna select back. We can filter and we can set a specific day if we wanted to. We can search for human detected, hand wave detected, abnormal sound, or pet. So there's a lot of things that we can do with this. I just kinda wish that it would kinda aggregate things a little better, make this banner go away. That, that's gonna kinda be my overall experience with this app. It does a lot of things, but the layout could be a little better and make it a little easier to find some of these things. So if I come down here and I click on one of my clips, there you'll see it loads it up and then somewhere in here, uh, a cat will come into view. But if you don't feel like watching or scrubbing through this, and we're just gonna whoop, pause that for a moment, we have our 10 second rewind or while it's playing right here, we have the option to speed things up to almost 16 times faster. And then right here, selecting that icon here, swipes it over to the live view, and then we can go back to our playback, but it also puts us into this view here, which kind of takes up more real estate. Coming back to the live view of our camera, and again, we're gonna pop it over to our SD card, and you can see slowly those things are populating. Uh, and you can see it says there's a total of 18 clips in there, and then we have our view events tab right from here, or we can view our events from here. That's our library, those are our seven events. So if I come back here, go back to the SD card, again, wish there was a way I could default it to that. If we come and select view events, those are gonna show us our individual events and let us know pet detected, pet detected. Uh, I'm pretty sure I deleted the one with, uh, here we go, human AI, there I am in the background. So lots of things that you can do with your camera and the clips. Tapping on our image here brings up all the things that we can currently do. This is a live feed. I can pause. I can mute the sound, I can bring up my pan tilt commands, I can turn on and off the audio, and there you go. It's talking through the camera. This will expand my live view, take up the full screen, and then this one is picture in picture. You might need to actually turn on your permissions within your smartphone in order to use that because it will overlay over other apps. And if you're like me on Android, uh, Android doesn't like apps being able to do that by default, and that's a jump out, which is take this image and push it out on its own. There's one other icon right up here. This is actually our settings icon. So we're gonna come all the way down here to the bottom and see what else we have, which is our snapshot that allow us to take a image of what's going on live in our feed here. We can record again what's going on live in our feed right here. These are our pan tilt commands. So if I come here, I can use this to move the camera around. I will say, again, depending on your network stability is how quickly and sensitive this actually works. One of the things that I really like about the Easy Viz app with the pan tilt stuff is if I hit the bottom one here, notice that it's flashing red. That means it's at the bottom of what it can actually go to. And if I start moving this, see that along the bottom there, that axis, that actually lets you know how far left or right or up and down you can move this. So if I try and pan this up, notice we were over here at the bottom, but I can see just how far I can aim this up at my ceiling. Those are our pan tilt options. And we could just drag that across. We've got our talk, which is very similar to what we touched up here. We have our definition mode right here. So that's ultra maximum that it can do. Full HD, high def standard. So lots of options for how you want your video to come through if you don't have great uh, connection speeds, you can lower that in order to save some bandwidth. Here we have privacy mode. I do like this. If we turn on privacy mode, what will happen is the camera itself will rotate up and move it out of the way. So it actually is capturing nothing and you will see privacy mode is enabled. 
so you would select disable. Uh, it does have a little smiley face on the front, as you saw before. We are going to turn off privacy mode to bring us back into our options. There we go, and you can actually see the head rotate down. It is a little slower than other pan tilt cameras uh, that have had this option due to re-establish a connection, but not terrible. Here we have our 360 picture. This is, a, this is a really interesting thing. If we select 360, what it will do, this is one that I've done before, it will rotate the camera and take a full 360. And there you can see that's, that's me over in the corner there. It will take a 360 picture of everything that's going on. And you could scan through it. And if we touch on certain points in the picture, as you see me double tapping, it will move the camera to those points. So let's say over here, I caught something really weird. I click over there, it moves in. So we can reset the 360 picture, which will have it take another one. Or we've got our link detector, which you can get extra beacons. I don't have that. So I'm just talking about the camera itself. So that's our 360 right there. And then we can rearrange these items as they appear in the bar. So if there's things that you use more often, you can shuffle them around. There's a lot of customization in this app, which I really like. Like I said, I just wish it was a little easier to navigate. But if we come up here and hypothetically make this picture bigger, you can see right here, you have access to all of those options that you had before. You have the ability to go to a playback if there's a specific clip that you wanted to get to. And then you've got your information about the camera itself. Notice there's no actual like easy viz watermarking on there, which I really appreciate. Uh, this is a live feed. And again, I'm getting unstable network connection because I have too many things going on. But if I double tap, You'll notice nothing happens for the zoom. If I pinch to zoom, you can really see just how close things get. And then you would back it out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our view here because those are all our controls and SD card capabilities. Now we actually wanna see our options right up here, selecting our options. This is where we get into some of the meat of what this can do. First being, you can name your device. Moving down, we have our intelligent detection. So this is gonna be our AI stuff. If we select this, we have the ability to have image change detection. With other cameras that are plug in, meaning they use electricity, this would be like a pixel-based change. So hypothetically, if this is the image that the camera's seeing, camera seeing, and then this happens, you will get a notification because the pixels have changed. We have our human-based detection right there. And for any of these, if you want to know how to toggle it on and off, you simply go there. Or information about what it's going to do, you simply select there and it will tell you exactly what it is. Here we have our pet detection, just like it sounds. Keep an eye for your pets. Abnormal sound, mainly for crying babies, but if there's a loud bang or something like that that's out of the ordinary, it will send you a notification. Gesture recognition. This is the weird one that everybody else who I've seen review this camera says it's a neat feature, but they don't know why it's really there. I have thought of something why this could be very good to have as part of this camera. And that's being, let's say you have a small child who does not yet have a cell phone of their own. And you, like me, get bombarded with notifications all the time from things like this. Uh, you kind of miss one or don't pay attention to it. If you turn on gesture control and you have somebody wave at the camera, small child waves at the camera, well, guess what? Then it will call the application through your phone and give you a voice call with the person. So small child needs to get in contact with you. You're not paying attention to your notifications. They wave at the camera and force you to pay attention. That is the best use of this that I can think of, or hypothetically a pet sitter that doesn't have your phone number, as odd as that might be. But that's an interesting feature of the C6. Coming down, we have our notifications. Well, we have audible notifications. Right now I have it muted, but you can have it up in tents, soft, custom sound, configure audible warning, and then you kind of have a speaker here that you can drag. I have them all off because I don't want it, but it's there. Message notification, you have to receive device messages in order to actually get uh, the library, which I'll show you in a moment, but you gotta turn that on. Device message interval, so you can change this. Right now I have it at its minimum of one minute between notifications, or you can set it all the way up to 30 minutes. I have this on too. Easy Viz app notification, and then configure notification, I have it disabled, but there's a lot of extra things that you can do for the push notifications. You can set up specific times, days, a lot of customization here. And then you have offline notifications. I have that off, because well, I just want it when it's online. Moving on, we have our audio. Well, you gotta enable that because, well, 
You want to hear what's going on? You got to turn that on. Device voice prompt, you probably heard that during the setup process. That's what that is. Image. Selecting this, we have, well, this is going to be our live view right now. You have your WDR setting, which is for better image effect when uh, background or backlighting scenes. So like this, kind of a mixture. If I turn that on, you can see it changes the way it looks. I'm going to turn that off again so you can see kind of changes. You can see this is dark over here because there's a lot of white light coming out of there. Turn that back on one more time so you can see. And notice that mutes it and that over there now looks kind of less washed out. And then here you have OSD. When enabled OSD with the device name will be displayed on all videos captured. So that's right up there. If you don't like that, simply toggle it off and it's no longer there. And then you have the ability to flip your image. So if you're mounting this upside down on a ceiling, you can flip the image so that you're actually looking at it correctly. And we're gonna flip that back and selecting back one more time, we have our lights, we have our camera status light, which we can turn off, which I might recommend doing uh, only because the light on the front blinking instead of being a steady light kind of annoys me. I wish they would change that. But again, just food for thought. Here we have our PD, PTZ settings. That's going to be our movement settings. We have auto tracking. Now, if you were trying to find how to get the camera to follow you, uh, this is turned off by default, but come into the PZ settings, turn that on, and now the camera will follow you and push in when it detects a human, as long as you have those AI events enabled. You have your fixed view, so the lens will not rotate when tracking. Uh, we have our flexible view, the lens will rotate while following human movement, and then we have our position calibration and our 360 picture. So again, we were here before, this is just another way to access it, and then our position calibration will have it go through and move so that it's actually true center. Very nice. All right, coming down, we have our general, we have cloud storage, if you so chose to use it. Again, there's a seven day free trial right here, and it lets you know all the things that you can get with that trial. I particularly like the fact that you have the SD card, which is right here, here's our record list. If we come in here, we have our cloud storage, we have our memory card, and we have all day. So it could do all day recording, or it could do clips. Selecting the memory card, just so you know, lets us know how much space has been used. We can reformat it and it lets you know it's normal, so we're all good, all things are green. We have our security settings, so video encryption, and then we can change our encryption password. If you set it up, don't worry about it. We have our network right there, that's my IoT network. We have our device information, as you might imagine, lots of sensitive information there, won't be showing you, but that's where you go to find it. And then we have share the device. Selecting that will allow you to send a share request to a person who also has the EasyViz app. We can restart the device and delete the device from here. And selecting back, those were all of our options for the EasyViz C6. We're gonna select back one more time and talk about down here. This is our device list. We have our library. Again, the library will not be populated unless first you turn on notifications. That was one of the things that was frustrating me for a little bit because all, all of these past days, I had no data because no notifications were being pushed because I was trying to not have to push notifications when you have like four different cameras sending you notifications at once. And here you can see it's kind of letting you know I was doing things. So here's pet detected even though it was upside down. Uh, it's gonna let you know all of that and it lets you know the name of the camera in case you have multiple cameras. Next tab over is automation. You can set up lots of automations with this. I have not done this myself, but there are plenty of videos, one linked in the corner, that lets you know what you can do with this. It's kind of cool. Coming back to our device list, we're gonna come over to the upper left-hand corner because we talked about this really quickly. This is our profile. You have your my profile, my albums, general settings, family and guest, Cloud Play, Easy Viz Drive, Smart Integration, so you can integrate this with Alexa, Google, and IFTTT. Again, about the app, you have new features, the app recently updated, so it's telling you all the new things that you can do. You have Help Center, you have Feedback, and you have a live chat option right there. Each of these will have lots of extra things that you can do, uh, such as if we come up quickly to general settings, you've got language, you've got dark mode, you've got device auto update, save. I'm not going to dig into those. Just know if you're looking for things like that for the application itself rather than the individual device, that's where you go. And this has been a rather long look at the EasyViz app for the EasyViz C6 2K+.
So there's a lot that you can do in the EasyViz app, as you saw. There's a lot of customization. There are a lot of AI-based smarts that this has. One of the things that I wish the application would do slightly differently is the ability to download the clips that this takes without having to record them to download to download them to your device. The fact that it does that kind of makes it a little clunky to get them off of this and onto your smartphone. If EasyViz could fix that in the application, that would help greatly. But I just wanted to bring that up because I know I didn't quite touch on that when I was showing you the application. One other thing to consider with hardware like this is, well, there's a speaker on it. How good is the sound that comes from the C6? Well, let's take a listen. Audio test. Valley sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three. One other thing that you might not be considering with a pan tilt zoom camera is motor noise. This makes noise. This makes noise. How loud is the C6 when you are pan tilt or zooming? And I'm gonna say, of all of the actual Pantel cameras that I've tested so far, this is the quietest that I've ever heard. In fact, I almost considered not putting in this portion because you barely hear anything. But if you're interested, here is the sound test for the motors. In the application, you saw the, the large amount of video clips that I was testing with this. However, there are a few things that I found lacking in those video clips and video options. One being that, unlike other cameras, there's no motion tag box around whatever it's looking at. I really wish it would have that. Also, while it can zoom in and push towards a moving target, I wish it would, using the AI Smarts, especially for a human, pan up a little more to the face, not just kind of zoom in on the target itself. Now, I will not be including any clips in this video. Instead, I will have a separate video over there, which has all of the clips in their 2K glory, which is why I don't want to have them here, because I don't want to downscale them. So over there, if you want to see the full clips that you can have from this. One of the things to keep in mind with the video clips for this is you are going to be getting 25 FPS. So that is well above a lot of its competitors by about 10 frames. So that's gonna give you that super smooth tracking, but also watch super smooth movement, whether it's day or night. Another thing that I am always concerned with because I have a lot of smart devices in my house is actual power usage of a smart device. Well, I'm happy to say that the C6, while just idling during the day, it uses 2.9 watts of power. At night, when those two IR lights come on, it uses 4.0 watts of power. During the day, when rotating, meaning you're moving it around, it uses 3.5 watts of power. At night, it spikes up to about 4.7. Now, compared to some of the other cameras that I've tested, they are a little on the high side. However, there's a lot of internal smarts that is happening while it's doing that to justify why those power usages are higher. I will say that they're not on the highest end that I've ever tested, just know that they're also not on the lowest, but there's a lot going on in here and those are not bad numbers at all. Speaking of all those internal smarts, that is going to lead to one of the downfalls I feel for the C6, and that is the price range. If you're looking at this compared to other pan tilt zoom cameras, this is going to be on the pricier side of things. But I want you to keep in mind that for free, you get local storage, you get person detection, pet detection, motion detection, noise detection, that weird but still interesting wave detection, all that AI stuff built into this for free. A lot of other competitors make you pay for that. And if you don't need cloud storage, you just purchase the camera and you're done. You have no subscription fee after that for those extras. So keep that in mind. Yes, it's on the higher side of the price range, but once you pay for it, you're done. It's in your house. It's good to go. There are a lot of things that I thought were very quirky with this particular camera when EasyViz reached out to me to ask me to review it. And I will admit, I was a little off put at first. However, the longer that I had this camera and the more testing that I did with it, the more I actually came to really like it. It's an odd little camera, but if you're looking for a pan tilt zoom camera with a lot of AI smarts, I do think the EasyViz C6 2K, especially if you want those 2K videos, is well worth your time in checking out. With that being said, 
I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.